Hello, everyone. It's my greatest delight to, to welcome you at our majlis, which will be a very joyful one for me. Uh, I'm going to introduce you. Well, three, three friends, two of them are, are actually uh, here. Catherine couldn't come, and she was the third or one, one of the three editors of, of this magnificent volume we are going to talk about. Well, in the case of Francesca and, and Luca, I can give a very personal introduction. Um, Francesca is kind of, um, we have some sort of uh, family relationship in the sense that I was part of this volume and I have a, a baby of some 60 pages long length in it, which is pretty heavy for an academic baby. And uh, I think probably that's the that, that's the longest in the whole whole uh, volume. And and well, Francesca edited it several times. And you know, uh, this is not a necessarily easy relationship, the editor author relationship. I don't know whether you are going to talk about this, but it's 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 like educating uh, a child together and making choices about it and. Or, or, or doing an artwork together. And, and uh, I still like Francesca, or, or I like her even more than before. So, so that's, that's quite a thing. Not, not just the immense amount of work what she put in it, but the way that, that uh, uh, she, she did it. I think my last, last uh, round of, of edits was over, over a, a thousand comments. So that was positively mad, <laughs> and she took it graciously. And she just yes, and they applied they applied them. So that that was incredible. <clears throat> and uh, well, I I also know Luca not just in connection with this project. I think I met Luca originally in, in connection with this project, but then Luca was also a visiting scholar in 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 Exeter, and. Uh, and he happened to to live in in our flat, uh, and uh, which he rented. And then when he left, uh, well, if you rented out a flat to someone, and the person leaves the flat uh, after after a long while, and then you can still think of fondly of that person, that's quite a thing. And and this is the case of, of Luca. So he, he's 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 a lovely person and a, an excellent scholar. So we are up here for a treat, and and I let them uh, to talk about this this immense achievement what they what they uh, did this this incredible volume and incredible series of of books. Uh, yes, please, uh, um, Luca. If I remember well, it's you you who 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 start right. Yes. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you to you for inviting us to present uh, our in your volume in the Monday Majlis. I uh, share the screen because you have a presentation. And... Luca, can you be a bit louder, please? Okay, I will try to <laughs> to speak a bit louder. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, do you do you see the presentation? Perfect. Okay. All right. Uh, I will start. I will start by introducing uh, Catherine Mayer Joen, who could not be with us for professional and family reasons. Uh, she is full professor of modern history uh, at the Sorbonne in Paris. Her research focuses on the cultural and religious history of early modern and modern Egypt, and she has authored an impressive number of publications. Uh, then Francesca Bellino is an associate professor of Arabic language and literature at the University of Naples, uh, L'Orientale. Her main research interests are Adab literature, encyclopedism, and popular literature. And she has also published several works on a variety of topics. As for me, my name is Luca Patrizzi, and I'm currently Assistant Professor of Islamic Studies at the University of Turin, having previously worked as a researcher at the University of Geneva, Sorbonne, Bonn, and also Exeter. Uh, but now I will pass the floor to Francesca for a very brief presentation of the project in general. Mm. 
today we are presenting uh, uh, both uh, the three conferences uh, and the general project uh, organized uh, by Catherine mayor -Jawan. So the project out outlined by Catherine was to approach uh, the research on ADAB within the framework uh, of the history of ideas. Basically, uh, her intention was to investigate the concept of ADAB while making history of the Muslim world at the same time. As an historian, and not an historian of Arabic literature, uh, her choice had fallen on ADAB given the relevance it had in the intellectual history of the Islamic and Islamicate uh, world. Although uh, not uh, an ERC, uh, her project was a true European project. In the framework of a five-year uh, research project started in the 2011 and uh, ended in the 2016, sponsored by the Institut Universitaire de France, the two first, the two first investigators of the project, Ladab and Islam, Catherine mayer jawan and Luca Patrizzi were joined by several collaborators. Together, they convened the three international conferences on the history of this notion attended by more than 50 colleagues. Uh, a part of them are today present at this presentation and meeting, and uh, we are discussing partly also the papers. Luca. Okay, so uh, those are the three conferences, the presentation of the three conferences and the three volumes uh, from the three conferences. Uh, concerning uh, my research uh, on ADAB, I started uh, working on ADAB during my PhD. I did in joint supervision between the University of uh, Aix-Marseille and the University of Naples uh, in Orientale. I was doing a research uh, on Abdel Wahab Sharani, a famous Egyptian scholar and Sufi who lived between the end of the Mamluk era and the beginning of the Ottoman era. Uh, while studying uh, his work, I realized that a large number of his books were dedicated to rules and included the term Adab in the title, uh, like this work, uh, which is maybe the most representative book on Sufi Adab, in the, that I studied in the beginning of my research. Uh, and so I decided uh, to work on the notion of Adab uh, in Al Sharani. But when I started writing uh, a linguistic introduction on the term uh, Adab itself, I realized that all the scholars uh, who had dealt with the issue were endlessly repeating the same linguistic theory, which, curiously enough, derived it from an Italian Orientalist who lived in the first part of the 20th century, Carlo Nallino, and almo almost uh, no one had gone back to analyzing the question of the origin and formation of the notion of Adab. And so from that moment on, this represented a challenge for me. And my PhD thesis took this direction, namely analysis of the origin and formation of the notion of Adab and anal analysis of the religious literature of Adab. The thesis is written in Italian. This is the title in English, The Divine Banquet, uh, Formation and Development of the Notion of Adab uh, in Islam from its origins to the literature of Adab Sophia. It has been not published entirely, but through a number of articles, which I will mention soon. In the meantime, I moved uh, to Cairo to pursue my research, and it was precisely there during a conference that I met uh, Catherine. And since she had been working on Adab and she was very interested in the subject, we decided to start a project of conferences and publication at the end of my PhD. Uh, Catherine won uh, a big call from the Institut Universitaire Français, and she decided to devote a budget to organizing our project. Uh, despite the fact that the natural progression would have been to begin with the conference, on the origins of the notion of Adab, we decided to start with the easiest subject for us at the time, namely Sufi Adab. And so in 2012, uh, we organized the first conference in Paris, 
also involving Ed Fouillebois Pierronet, who had worked on Persian Sufi Adab literature. Also, Francesca, as she said, came to Paris to attend the conference. The result, uh, as you saw, is a, uh, is a volume published in 2017 entitled Ethics and Spirituality in Islam, Sufi Adab, whose edition work was also joined by Francesco Chiabotti. Uh, this volume is the first collective study on Sufi Adab, but despite this, and despite the great value of the contribution it contains, to my opinion, it has not attracted the attention it deserves, perhaps because it also contains articles in French and not just in English, uh, as the other volumes. In 2014, I assisted Catherine in organizing a second uh, conference on Adab, which focused on a topic uh, on which she had particularly developed her analysis in the context of Adab, namely its relationship to modernity uh, through the lens of the civilization process developed by the, the sociologist uh, Norbert Elias. And the second volume of this series, edited only by Catherine, was published in 2020 as a result of this conference and was entitled precisely Adapt and Modernity. And finally, in 2016, Catherine and I, together with Francesca, organized the third conference, which actually is go goes back to the origin of the notion uh, and the result of which is precisely the third volume we are presenting uh, today. And uh, before passing the floor to Francesca for the presentation of the third volume, I will briefly introduce my work, uh, my works on Adab, originating uh, from my doctoral thesis and published for the most part in the context of the Adab uh, project. I will start in a logical rather than a chronological sense from the last article published in the last volume uh, entitled From Education to Etiquette, an attempt to reconstruct the semantic enlargement of the term adab, in which I take as a nice starting point some insights mm -hmm. of another Italian Arabist, Francesco Gabrielli, who wrote the entry adab in the second edition of the Encyclopedia of Islam, uh, published uh, in the late 50s. Uh, Gabrielli stated that the semantic uh, evolution of the term adab in the history of the Arabic literature is parallel and perhaps even more remarkable than the evolution of other important terms like uh, ilm, knowledge, or din, religion, and also pointed out in particular that during the course of its linguistic uh, history, the term adab underwent at a certain point a remarkable semantic enlargement, which made it able to convey a whole series of new nuances of meaning. This expansion of meaning has made Adab, in his words, the vertebral column of the high Abbasid culture. And then finally, one of the key terms in the political, social, cultural, and religious context of Islamic civilization from the end of the Umayyad epoch onward. My article is precisely an attempt to reconstruct this linguistic and cultural process in detail. In the first part, I explore the opinion of ancient linguists in Arabic lexicographic dictionary, showing how these materials have been interpreted by contemporary specialists who have been concerned with the evolution of the term Adam. And finally, I combine ancient opinions and contemporary interpretations in order to propose a synthesis that takes into account at the same time historical, political, linguistic, and theological issues. The following article uh, from the logical point of view is entitled The Metaphor of the Divine Banquet and the Origin of the Notion of Adab and was published outside the volumes on Adab in a volume entitled Knowledge and Education in Classical Islam a religious learning between continuity and change, edited by Sebastian Gunther. This article is closely related to the previous one and aims to return to Nalino's theory and compare it with the classical theory of the linguists of the Arabic language. Uh, in summary, according to Arabic linguists, the origin of the notion of Adab is the notion of invitation to a banquet, Ma'duba al-Ma'duba, 
while according to Nallino, this is a fabrication without any connection to the term. Moreover, Nallino claimed that this term is synonymous with sunnah. Uh, to begin with, I analyzed the occurrences of this term in ancient Arabic literature and found that it does not occur in the Quran, for example, but only in pre-Islamic and early Islamic poetry and in Hadith. An excellent article by Bonnebacher already existed on, on this subject. The conclusion is that at this stage, the term was only used with the meaning of education and correction, ta'adid, and absolutely not in connection with sunnah. In the course of the 8th and, and, uh, 8th and 19th century, however, the term adab was affected by the semantic enlargement mentioned above, and a technical nuance emerged, mostly in the plural, as rules, adab, which will be then the primary meaning under which it will be used in religious literature up to the present day. On the basis of excellent previous analysis, I single out the Umayyad and Abbasid Kutab, the Mawali, as the one responsible for this semantic enlargement, and furthermore, try to show also through a brief comparative history how the meaning related to the invitation to the banquet is, on the other end, absolutely inherent to the technical notion of Adab. Another article on Adab is uh, Adab al-Muluk, Utilisation de la terminologie de pouvoir dans le sophisme médiéval, published in the first volume. <laughs> A revised English translation entitled Sufi Terminology of Power appeared in the Handbook of Sufi Studies, Volume 1, Sufi Institution, edited by Alexander Stopas. In this paper, I attempt to show how the integration of the notion of Adab into Sufism is not merely technical, but finds its root in the environment predisposition to the use of rules of good spiritual behavior, showing a surprising analogy between the political realm of the court and the spiritual realm of Sufism itself. Moreover, in this article, I focus particularly on the notion of Sufi majlis and the analogies with the majlis of the court. Finally, for the volume uh, on Adab and Modernity, I studied an interesting late Adab manual, the Jawami Al Adab fi Akhlaq al Anjab by Jamal al Din al Qasimi, who died in 1940, 14, 1914, and a typical Salafist figure with a penchant for Ibn al Arabi, a text in which the classical religious Adab shows an interesting interconnection with modernist and reformist thought typical of that era. And now, I give the floor to Francesca for an introduction to the third volume of Adab. Thank you. I wish uh, to start uh, the presentation by thanking uh, uh, Istvan for this invitation and also all those uh, who participated in the volume. I can see Ignacio, Stefan, uh, and uh, um, Negin Yavari. Um, I will uh, now present the volume in its broad uh, sense uh, and uh, in the lines of researches uh, that it, it um, tries to, to trace. The aim of uh, the third conference uh, was to address the issue of the origins of Adab uh, against uh, uh, the background of the history of Islamic civilization. Then, uh, sur la longue durée, that is uh, from its emergence to modernity, and tracing its developments and transformations throughout the centuries. Third, without uh, limiting it to the so-called golden age of the Abbasid period and to an Arabic Arabophone phenomenon. As a consequence, and also intentionally, the aim was not to trace the origin of the origins of Adab. For this purpose, there will need to be a fourth conference, perhaps organized by and limited to the historians of Arabic literature. 
Catherine, Luca, and I started from the assumption that the origins of ADAB were a complex and multifaced phenomenon, which, despite having a beginning, has been repeated over the, over the centuries in different circumstances, taking on different features and significance over time. If we want to make a parallel with the natural world and consider origins as roots, which may be debatable anyway, we thought about the origin F as if there had been a process of anastomosis, that is the formation of an interconnection between roots of the same plant, between roots of different plants of the same species, or less frequently between roots of different species. It was precisely the fact of having worked on later periods and different genres, so modernity and Adam Sufi in the first two volumes of the series that make it possible to go back to the Greek, Persian, Syriac, Arabic sources and analyze the formation of this notion as a crucible soon to be Islamized and its adaptation to Arab and Arabic and Muslim culture through subsequent and continuous and repeated processes of transmissions, translations, quotations, each time redefined according to the places and the needs of the, link, of the leading actors of that time. From this, it follows that the meta metamorphosis of Adab in new context distant in time and also in space from the originating, each time recreate new origins of Adab, a new way of recounting them. As Catherine underlines in the introduction, the process of the formation of Adab can be regarded as interconnected first with multiple other cultural processes of culture surrounding the emerging Arabic Islamic one, in particular uh, Greek, Persian, uh, culture and subsequently with cultures in contact with the dominant one. But on the other hand, also as continuous in relation to historical time, not found in a single place, community, language, but when viewed against the backdrop of the broader framework of the Islamic world and subject to multiple outcomes depending on the different social historical context considered. But as we know, it's not the concepts that are in contact, but people. In essence, l'adab toujours recommencé is a matter of considering adab as being a part of composite intellectual relationships that do not involve linear evolutions, but rather networks of interconnected cultural relationships. While being unambiguous in time, the word adab itself has been crossed by this phenomena. As Luca said, the meaning of the term Adab probably had a polygenesis. It enlarged over time and covered multiple meanings, and it has been also repeatedly reformulated in different historical, cultural, and linguistical contexts. In its broad outlines, uh, the case studies of some articles of the third volume provide insights into the history of this term in time. Uh, Luca, maybe you can uh, go down to the to the other slide. The next one. Uh, okay. Some articles. Uh, the previous one? one. The no, one. the previous. This one. Okay. Some articles suggest comparison with similar notions emerged in parallel or in contact with that of Adab. For example, Sipiansky focused on the concept of paideia of the Greek Byzantine civilization, while Francesca Gorgoni with that of Musar of the medieval Hebrew culture. Other authors have looked at case studies of contact, for instance, Tutan. 
in the Turkish Iranian historical and literary context and uh, Etienne Navo in Malaysia and Indonesia. The concept of, of Adab brought to light phenomena of both continuity and discontinuity in its various processes of adaptation in other languages the so of the so-called Islamicate world. Uh, Alessandro Mengozzi dwelt on the gaps coming to light when transposing a classical Arabic Islamic notion in the modern Aramaic context of the Christians living between northern Iraq and Syria, Kurdistan and eastern uh, Turkey. Besides, also the Nahda led to further remodulation and reformulations of Adab. Haddad, Benigni, Katrima Jawan focused on various attempts to historicize the concept between the 18th and the early 20th century. In particular, Patrizzi and Mengozzi highlighted the role played by Orientalists in such reformulations that idealized more or less consciously the mythical past. The chapters of the second part, next slide, of the volume six uh, to examine two different tensions uh, in the history of Adab uh, of the early Arabic literary culture through a series of more restricted uh, case studies uh, concerning uh, certain works, uh, single authors, uh, specific text, uh, isolated uh, themes. On the one hand, an overall tension to formalize and thereby coagulate certain processes into literary canons perceived as such by later literature. On the other hand, a constant underlying tension, not to say control, exerted by power, ethics, and emotions on the formation or sometimes even dissolution of such processes. Besides, the chapter of the second part examine works the different textual type in the typology of the materials used in their compositions and in writing technique. The three case studies provided by Ignacio Sanchez, Francesca Bellino, and Francesco Chiabotti outline different processes of formation of a literary canon through the compilation and transmissions of epistles of the Udaba, manuals for the Kutab, Adab, Kum, Hadith, treaties of Imala for the Olama. The three case studies provided by Faustina Duficararz, Negin Yavari, and Monica Baldatillier hint at the close relationship between other power and ethics as seen through the prism of Windows. Uh, sapiencia, uh, sapiential literature, mirror for princes and political treaties, and other anthologies dedicated to particular sentiments and feelings, such uh, love and anger. Next uh, slide. Mm -hmm. Similarly to its origins, also the transmissions of Adab have uh, been multiple. However, only if we consider a sufficiently broad historical framework can we argue in terms of continuous or better toujours recommencé uh, transformation of Adab as uh, an indispensable component for understanding the intellectual history of uh, the Islamic hate world. In the third part of the book, uh, the line of research move along uh, three uh, axes, better to say classics, that reconnect with the previous part. The Kalila Wadimna was the first, the work par excellence that in each of its countless versions can always be considered as the outcome of the crossroads of various literary traditions and that, at least from the early Arabic translation by Ibn al-Mukaffa, gave rise to new, often overlapping lines of transmission linking the East to the West and the other way around. Against this backdrop, Christo Nagy 
dealt with the origins of a fable and its uh, Ezopian language. And Thibaut Dubert uh, restricted the history of the reception of the book back in the Eastern world through a kaleidoscope of versions in various languages, Arabic, Persian, Urdu, and Sanskrit. Then uh, there are the makamat, the genre that most uh, characterizes Arabic prose and that uh, through another series of continuous uh, transformation transmuted uh, the rhymed and rhythmic uh, prose uh, characterizing the early canonical works of the 10th century into the modern novel-like prose of the early 20th century works. Through the analysis of the collection of Hamadani, Bilal Orfali, and Pomeranz bring to light a series of inner and extra-textual metamorphoses involving the narrative structures of the text, elements and themes given by the author in the storyline that may have been borrowed from other cognac uh, works. Almost at the full uh, test end of the timeline, of the genre, the essay by Stefan uh, Reichmuth examines a romantic makama, the complex web of cultural fractions that, that can be read through the storyline, this time brings to light the profound transformation, including cracks, of the genre when faced with modernity and with the emotional dimension. Next uh, slide. Then uh, there is the anthology, the genre that in the history of the Islamic eight uh, literatures uh, has consistently been able to reshape more or less uh, basic pieces of literary knowledge into an enjoyable, didactic, useful format by refunctionalizing it according to the recipients for which it was intended. Hilary Kilpatrick underlines a number of innovative features between the Mamluk and the Ottoman periods through the analysis of a few famous uh, anthologies of the period. She argued that the adaptability of an adab of individuals belonging to different social groups has been able to express their response to the changing circumstances of their world and their place in it. This observation led uh, Kilpatrick to assume that Adab should be understood as rules of conduct, uh, as the intellectual baggage considered necessary by members of a specific group uh, as mastery of Arabic language and its uh, literary heritage. The truthfulness of this observation is also evident evident from the following essay by Alessandro Mengozzi, who recast the concept of an Arabic and Islamic Adab in the modern Aramaic context, and uh, in particular in the pro production of anthologies written in Syriac, uh, Garshuni, Aramaic, uh, Neo-Aramaic, uh, and uh, a mixing of uh, these languages. Next uh, slide. Uh, at each uh, stage of its history, the origins of Adab are uh, metamorphosized. The first part of the volume deals uh, with the different cases of reformulation of the concept uh, in different uh, genres. The three articles by Coulomb, Toutain, and Novo illustrate the reception of this notion from genres uh, such as science, aesthetics, and mysticism. The last uh, contributions uh, by Haddad, Benigni, and Katrin mayer closing the volume, rather focus uh, on Adab and the history of literature. In different ways, they show how European Orientalists from one side and Arab scholars uh, to the other have worked uh, to define the, the origins uh, of Adab and attempted to historicize this concept. The case study of Catherine Major Jawan brings back issues raised in the, introdu in the introductory chapters and connects, at least ideally, the reflections on various Egyptians, uh, Arabist, to those of the European Orientalist. 
Uh, in conclusion, uh, this third volume does not uh, uh, presume to trace a definitive and exhaustive history of the origins of Adab and its transformation, adaptation, and metamorphosis over time. Obviously, the case studies, as well as the research axes so far identified by the participants in this project, do not exhaust the possibilities of understanding the notion of Adab throughout the um, Arab Islamic history. However, they exemplify some processes that, that have profoundly characterized such continuous changes over time within the various linguistic, literary, cultural, social, religious contexts in which Adab played a major or minor role. Um, this was uh, just a short uh, presentation of uh, the contents and also of the lines of research of uh, the volume. Here you have a list of the participants to, the, to this uh, third uh, um, to this uh, third volume. So the open is floor to questions and to to reactions. <laughs> Well, normally we 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 close the recording for for the questions, and we will do that. Um, but before before uh, we got there, I ju I just want to um, just something in my mind which I'd like to to say, and then then I will have a question, uh, which I'd like uh, the the resp your response uh, to be to be recorded. So, well, f first of all, it's. It, it was very. I'm, I'm just writing now a paper on on uh, evolutionary approaches to to the study of humanities, and I think uh, we should reanimate uh, evolutionary studies. And it was very interesting for for me that even if you don't want, you don't necessarily want to to use concept of evolution when when you think about um, a notion like Adab, you just come up with metaphors uh, which are evolutionary, because and 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 which are which are biological, and it's not it's it's I I well in that that paper I I'm arguing that it's not accidental. It's just it's not just metaphors. It's it's that patterns of evolution are are similar, and as you mentioned, uh, yeah, the, you didn't want to show it as a as a uh, linear 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 evolution. Well, evolution is not linear. So, so, and all all these uh, uh, notions about the roots and how they are mixing, and uh, yeah, it's it's. Um, I think it's fascinating, and it of course shows the immense complexity of the of of Adab itself, and then then of 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 your project. And now, uh, the question is is then, well, what was your well, how did you do that? <laughs> the whole the whole project, uh, how? Because that's I think I think it's obvious for anyone that it's it's an incredible project and a huge amount of work, even for those who, who never did anything similar ever. Um, well, I, I yeah, I'd like to 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 ask you about this of your modus operandi. Why do we uh, doing the addition? Well, well, you can you can you can talk about everything, including mm, grant the grant application. If you 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 can talk about it and and recruiting people and then working with people, working with the authors, working uh, the three editors together. Um, how did Maybe you... I can yeah. I can just uh, um, start um, uh, uh, in a recounting uh, how we choose uh, the um, the topics and then people related to topics and then how we worked uh, uh, in editing the volume. First, uh, um, I mean. The project is uh, totally a, a Katrin Mayersha one project <laughs> in many ways, uh, and uh, in 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 the lines uh, 
that uh, she also uh, wanted to trace. Uh, she had a very strong idea in mind at the beginning. So her idea was not to, to, to write or to try to write a history of Adab within Arabic literature, but uh, rather to, to, to trace and to try to uh, assess the history of the origins of these notions within the intellectual history of Islam and better Islamicate world. So the idea was to find uh, topics and people, so case studies, uh, genres, text uh, authors, uh, that in many ways can can offer an idea of uh, continuous uh, of a continuous process of uh, remodulating uh, this concept of originating then remodulating and reshaping uh, this con this concept also in face of modernity so we started by by creating a kind of map of uh, of uh, these uh, four axes, so the idea of this notion at the early beginning as a crucible with other notions, then uh, a main core of uh, papers related to to the formations of uh, canon and classics, and then how there was a continuous reshaping of the concept in the Mamluk, Ottoman and periods and modernity. So um, the conference was a kind of big uh, workshop uh, of ideas because uh, many of you uh, gave uh, wonderful papers already in the first stage. And uh, and the papers that we received were really very good. I think the the every paper was uh, very focused both on the on the general idea of the of the project and uh, on a case study. So we tried by editing the volume to reconnect uh, all these papers in the lines of uh, of in the four, uh, four lines of uh, axis if we want of the research and uh, basically we read all the papers all together several times like uh, we we organized the real majalis online yes. Uh, in Zoom, uh, taking a long time to read the papers, to, um, to discuss them, uh, uh, each other, and to create a kind of links in between them. And then uh, I and Katrin wrote uh, the introductory uh, chapters to all these parts and create a kind of uh, of uh, of output also of this project. In particular, Francesca did a very big work in, in the edition. <laughs> in yeah, continue, Luca. <laughs> no, I mean the most of the work in the edition was made by, by Francesca. Mm -hmm. She was really incredible. In this, yeah. yes. and I can Actually, on, on... Yes. no I think we we worked uh, in the same we, we, we had the same uh, uh, we worked in the same way for the three volumes it was we considered uh, as a <laughs> the same project and we worked in the same way from from the the other side as author I, I have to say it's impressive. I didn't even know what you were doing, but it's that that you you gave very very detailed feedback, uh, very thorough editing, and at the same time it wasn't invasive at all. So I don't know how you did the links, but it was done in such a subtle way that I I didn't notice that I I had to to add things in order to to link it to to other other papers. Which is really, yeah. Now that I hear it, I'm I'm even more impressed. Uh, Luca, and 
well, uh, both of you, how how did this project affect your 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 own life and all your own own scholarly scholarly life and 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 ways of thinking? Uh, so, because that's yeah, that's such a that's an interaction between uh, between the artwork and the artist. Um, yes. Actually, for me, it was a very long period because uh, we started to speak about this project in the beginning of my PhD. Sorry, <laughs> and uh, so I, I something like more than almost fifteen years of of, of work of, of intellectual work on this, apart from the physical work, no, on the metabolization no? also of the. Of the of the research, uh, and actually, so it's I mean it's, it's a part of, <laughs> of my life. <laughs> because also because my my PhD thesis was on this on this topic, so for me it's really important. I, and actually, I I always come back on the on the notion of Adab and on on the different uh, oh, uh, windows <laughs> that open it, this this research in my in my personal path. Of, the, of research, uh, and so uh, I mean, even if the work, as Francesca said, that we did for this last volume was really huge and really <laughs> tiring, we can say. Uh, and so for me, I, I told to them, for me, it's the project is finished. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I mean, at the end, when now this time is. is uh, passing um, I'm, I'm still open for um, uh, analyzing uh, other I mean for starting again <laughs> because toujours uh, commencer also for for the project now also this project is always uh, rebegun uh, and I think that uh, Francesca is thinking about something for the future I don't I don't know exactly what, but uh, I'm sure that uh, it is not finished. It is something that uh, will uh, accompany us for, I mean, maybe the rest of our <laughs> research career, I think. Well, also, yeah, your case is a beautiful example of someone starting a research for their PhD, or maybe, I don't know, maybe even before, and then going through through the the his uh, the steps of of career reaching uh, a permanent position uh, in in Torino, for which I I congratulate you very happily, you. and well at the same time you 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 had uh, two two children, so so also I wanted to ask you both what what did you learn? Can I add? Uh, yeah. A more small thing, I think. Uh... I would like also to add, I think uh, Adab, uh, the notion of Adab is crucial for everybody working on, on Arabic uh, textualities and uh, Islamic literatures in general, I think. Um, in many ways, uh, each of us uh, develop during his career and research uh, path uh, ideas, uh, not one idea of Adab, ideas of Adab that are changing, maybe also remodulating uh, through the text uh, on which uh, he or she works uh, on. Uh, as an Arabist and also as somebody who is working on the history of Arabic literature, especially on pre-modern period, I think that Catherine Maria Jawan challenged us with two, pushed us to, towards two, uh, two challenges, I think. The first one is not to see, is to see the processes on the long durée. So, not to consider the modernity as something uh, uh, detached uh, from the past. So to look at the uh, golden past and then a uh, kind of uh, mythical uh, new age <laughs> with the Nahda. 
And this is the first uh, challenge, very important, uh, because uh, she she's thinking about processing uh, in a very complex way. The second one, uh, I think as an Arabist, uh, she also opened the floor to the idea of Islamic, Islamic hate literatures. So a concept uh, that was also functional in many ways uh, to uh, the development of uh, civilization. I think in this sense, uh, it was also very important. It's very debatable in many ways as an Arabist to involve also colleagues of different fields working on different languages. But in many ways, it was also very interesting to see how uh, similar uh, uh, texts or genres, but written in different languages and uh, places, can interact each other. An example, if I have to take an example, the the, the most interesting one for me was that of uh, of the Kalila Wadimna. I mean, we tackled both uh, an Arabic version, Arabic versions uh, of a fable within the the, the book of uh, Ibn Mukaffa, and then with another scholar. See. Uh, multiple versions of this of a, of another fable but within the context of uh, of the urdu sanskrit and uh, indian literature uh, in general so i think uh, we have a lot of to work on uh, in this way of course, it requires uh, a project, so it, it cannot be done uh, by a single person, person, but in many ways is a challenge um, because it involves a large group of people thinking uh, on, uh, on cultural processes in a broad way. That's, well... Uh... Thank you, thank you, uh, Francesca. I, um, well, one thing is is sure that in order to to manage such a project, uh, one one has to not just to 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 study, but to be able to apply adab very well. <laughs> so so that that's that's clear. You did you excelled in this. Um, I want, also want to to ask you about. In, in the case of both of you, there is an immense amount of self-sacrifice self, uh, in, 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 in that work. Because, yeah, well, while you are editing other people's work, uh, you are not writing yours. Um, and it's always a difficult balance to find. So how did you, did you negotiate that? And also, well, in, in the case of Luca, yeah, when when one is, one is a young young scholar, these choices are not necessarily uh, obvious to make. Um, and I'm asking this also because we have lots of young scholars here in the in 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 our majlis now, and and hopefully also we will see see this um, this uh, when I will upload it uh, online. So yeah, how did you? How did you make these choices, and how, how, yeah, the the compromise is, is and what, was it a compromise at all? Asking both of you. Yes, this is uh, also a big problem uh, behind. There is also a big problem behind this because we know uh, the big work that there is behind uh, these conferences, and then the volume after the conferences. And actually, now, as you know, in uh, in the contemporary academic uh, field, they are not considered. This work are not considered, like, for example, an article or in a, in a journal. No? Uh, actually, uh, these uh, the articles inside a volume like this were not peer reviewed. Were peer peer reviewed. Peer reviewed. It's a very uh, it's more than than a peer review in in a in a volume in in a journal. So I I don't understand uh, uh, how they decided to to consider uh, this work less than uh, the work in uh, in a journal. 
because apart from uh, the fact, as you said, that we, <laughs> we dedicate a lot of time to the edition and not to other work of the, um, our work, uh, our works, but also, as you know, also <laughs> for the family, no, uh, because we, <laughs> the, the, the one among us where we had family, we know that uh, sometimes when we do some uh, meetings, we are obliged to do it in, in particular in the last years in very uh, awful conditions with, <laughs> with uh, in particular the online uh, meetings, no, where in, in strange uh, timing, for example, in, in like now, <laughs> like like this this time, yeah. uh, and no, actually, I in the same time, I think that uh, this this kind of uh, uh, research, this kind of organization of conference, and this kind of editing of the volume is the life of uh, the research and. Uh, uh, it will be very. <laughs> I mean, I, I think we have to 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 go. We have to go ahead in in the back. To, I mean, in uh, in the organizing this uh, project of research of research uh, because it's really it, it is the. The, the only way to to to, to maintain a quality in, in the research i think mm -hmm. apart from the quantity and production etc but the quality of the research pass through this kind of very very hard work i think indeed there is a there is an interesting contrast between the the slogan of interdisciplinarity and such things and also the emphasis on on collaborative work and on the other hand, the non-recognition of of this kind of work, what you 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 put in into into that. Well, I learned that recently that that in the last ref ref round round, the research excellence framework in England, the editing edited volumes were were already considered. So that's a good development because previously I know when we edited uh, our volumes on 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 violence in Islamic thought, they were not considered. Uh, as 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 of of scholarly value, our work of of organizing the conferences and editing the books, as far as I know. So, so yes, there is there is uh, uh, at least uh, in that in that there is um, some some more recognition, and of course, well, the scholarly community know know the work uh, you you did and and it will yeah um i wanted to to ask you both what what did you learn throughout this whole whole process not just about adab but about 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 yeah can I add uh, something related, very related to Adab? I think also an, the editing of this book put us in a condition of uh, being very human. I mean, we were doing a long majalis <laughs> to, to read and correct the papers. So we spend a lot of time together in form informal time. Catherine, uh, in the main while, uh, was traveling uh, to Morocco. So, and we, I mean, the, the our meetings online were a way also to stay in touch in a very complicated moment of uh, her life and also in general of, uh, of history. So we passed through this moment thinking about uh, something that in many ways, I think also uh, crossed the, the centuries. I mean, the thinking of Adab is something is to have an idea, uh, but also of uh, our understanding of uh, the Islamic uh, civilization in moments in which uh, you have also to face the opposite. 
Uh, so we we also discussed a lot about that, uh, I mean, of the meaning of history of uh, history of these concepts uh, and its relation with the with the, with the history and with contemporaneity. So it was also something very much related to our lives in the real sense of the world. Uh, so our single paths, our uh, the, the historical moments uh, we were and we are living, uh, and also the the more profound sense of uh, of what we are doing. Uh, and I think uh, for all the scholars from every discipline, uh, Adab in many ways solicitate this kind of uh, thoughts. Um, so we also shared a lot of readings, uh, uh, a lot of uh, suggestions uh, through the notes of the of the authors. Also, we discovered uh, many things. So checking uh, the 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 references. Also, we discovered the new references. Uh, we read the new things. So it was a kind of uh, of uh, process of learning. And uh, through the the people uh, who participate uh, to this uh, to this project, and this is also the challenge of an editor. And, and I think it's something that, that is uh, absolutely fundamental in our in our work because uh, in many ways uh, our knowledge is limited. So through the all. Uh, through the participants and through other people, you can learn more and you can learn better. And you can also discover new paths of research. I think it's the challenge of an editor. Yeah, it's a kind of combination of passion and patience, isn't it? <laughs> uh, and, and not to, to lose hope. Um, and and not to lose temper <laughs> with, with with others and and with yourself and 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 anyone. <laughs> oh, so um, before concluding this 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 part and and uh, the recording, I I will advertise the next match list as we always do, and I put put it into the uh, chat. It will be a. a, a Excellent, bright young scholar Osama Al Azami, who is currently in in Oxford on Islamic Sufism, uh, one of the topics mentioned today, and and uh, uh, it's modern in a modern context. Yusuf Al Kardawi, spirituality and neo traditionalism. So please, please come again next week and and uh, and enjoy uh, his his talk. Uh, um yeah it's just something about the golden age um it's i think what what uh, you mentioned in 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 using this idea of golden age and somehow dismantling it and and, and questioning it and is, is is very interesting as it happens in this this paper on evolution i'm i'm talking on the evolution of the idea of golden age because that's that's such uh, such this is one of those ideas which have which have their own life and they are, they are also have um, uh, adaptable to different uh, contexts and and habitats and they are used um, um, here and there and live live like like Adab do so yes I will conclude the recording and and we'll ask. Uh, uh, everyone to to ask their their questions <laughs>